All right. Okay. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much. Today is November 4th, um, 2021. I want to thank everybody for coming to the California Board of Occupational Therapy board meeting today. And as always, just acknowledgements going out to our board staff um, and our legal team and everybody behind the scenes who makes this happen. Thank you so much. Our moderator and host today is Sarah Irani, so we're glad to have her helping out today. Thank you, Sarah. Um, and with that, um, Beata, Secretary Marcos, is it okay if we take roll um, to see if we have a quorum? Of course. Richard Bookwalter. I'm, I'm here. Lena Doe is not here yet. Denise Miller. Here. Jeff Farrell. Present. Sharon Pavlovich. Present. And Beata Marcos, present. Wonderful. Thank you, Secretary Marcos. We do have a quorum and hopefully um, board member Doe will be able to join us shortly. Um, so thank you for that. Um, yeah, welcome. It's fall. It's November. <laughs> this is President's Remarks on Agenda Item Number 2. Uh, again, just wanting to thank everyone for the work. We're in like crunch time. It's November. We have a lot to do between now and the end of December to get sunset going and done. And as you can tell by our agenda, lots to discuss. So I just, again, wanted to take this time to thank everybody. Um, and I was going to open it up to any of my colleagues to see if there was anything um, that they wanted to share today. Any board member comments? Oh, and I should probably always start by saying um, last week worked really well. If you have, um, you know, question as we start to engage, if you could just put your video on, we can see you. That'd be great. Um, then we know. Um, who needs to speak up and who has some um, thoughts to share. And so if you want to, please feel free to put your video on and share any comments if there are any board member remarks for today. Um, I can say something that uh, I recently submitted my letter to uh, the speaker's office indicating my interest on continuing and being re um, reappointed to the board, but I have not gotten um, a confirmation one way or the other yet. We'll keep our fingers crossed for Member Farrell. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Any other comments from board? No? Okay, if not, let's go to, we have two items for public comment sessions for um, items not on the agenda. And so in kind of a dual road, um, mode, excuse me, uh, public members are always welcome to introduce themselves. So I will, you know, see if anybody wants to introduce themselves before we share some of the items on the um, agenda. Are there anybody, any of our members that like to say hello? Not mandatory, but just want to send an invite out. Moderator, can you see if anybody would like to um, introduce themselves or say hello? Uh, this is a moderator, not the direction of the board. I've opened up that uh, Q and A feature for public comment. Uh, members of the public, if you would like to um, make a comment, please click that Q and A icon located at the bottom uh, right hand corner of your WebEx screen. All right, and it looks like we do have one individual who has requested public comment. Um, I just want to confirm um, with board president if at this time we're doing um, the timer or um, if you just want to let them speak while they introduce themselves. Oh, that's a great point. Um, yeah, we always, I should have reminded everyone we kind of keep comments to three minutes or under. Um, we don't need the time. I'll be monitoring and we can monitor together, moderator, but um, we don't need the, I don't need the timer for right now, but thank you. Oh, okay, I just wanted to, wanted to confirm. So um, we have a request from uh, Kristen Neville. Okay. Uh, Kristen, I will be requesting to unmute your microphone. Please click that unmute me button when the prompt appears on your device. All right, and you are unmuted. Afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Excellent. Uh, yes, I'm Kristen Neville with the American Occupational Therapy Association. Just wanted to say hello and good morning. Hi, Kristen. Nice to have you here. Thank you. Moderator, was that the only person that chose to, um, to kind of say hello today? Uh, yes, that was our only individual. Um, okay. I would also like to say that we do have a uh, board member Lena Doe on now. Oh, wonderful. 
Thank you for that. And we can close um, the public comment section and welcome our board member Doe. We just got started, so um, we will start addressing comments number four. We have two, and I think um, the first one, public comment for items not on the agenda, is from Bryant Edwards. If everyone can kind of pull up that document, um, and we'll have, I don't know if our moderator or our team um, can pull that up on um, the screen, but it is the document that for public comment no, dated November 2nd. Here we go. Thank you. So um, we have a letter from Brian Edwards from OTAC regarding, um, you know, business and professions code 2570.4, and he made some um, suggestions as a board. So I kind of wanted to see if anybody had any thoughts regarding the letter from Mr. Edwards. Good morning, um, President Pavlovich. My question, are we commenting or, or is this something we put on a future agenda item? Putting on future agenda item, board members. Okay. Yeah. Did you want to did you want a motion for that? Yeah, if we so if you, is, is that something you want to do for the board to discuss at a future time? Uh, I have an alarm going off, so I'm wondering if I could pass that baton to book board member Bookwalter. Okay. okay. I was just going to say that we should put it on a few. I thought we should put it on a future agenda. I, uh, and I, I don't think we need a motion for that. Okay. Uh, this board member Farrow, I, I, I would concur. I, I, it is always in your purview. If you think this is something that, um, would be of interest. To both the board and to the public for us to discuss this issue. And it seems like, you know, uh, field work is always um, something we need to be talking about. But, you know, with the capstone doc doctoral issues that are coming, I think this is definitely something that we should, you know, take up at a future meeting. Okay, so great. If you want to put it on, we're unhappy to discuss it. Yeah, let's put it on uh, a, future, a future agenda item to discuss. Um, We'll just make that so that board staff can make a note of that. And then um, I guess we should go Maybe up. If I may. Yes, please. Um, I would just like to uh, uh, simply provide the information that on the um, agenda, it is permitted to uh, for the board to take uh, to take a motion uh, or not. It's up to the discretion of the board and the president. Okay. Oh, thank you for the clarification, Helen. So it could go either way. Okay, we'll put this on item for a future agenda item. Um, I know we have another public comment, uh, but I'm wondering if I need to open it up to public comment per item. Heather Martin, do you want it after item or just after both items are discussed to open it up to the public? Any preference or uh, Helen, should I be asking you? Yeah, I think you should still take public comment. Okay, after each item. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Moderator, could we open it up for any public comment regarding the letter from Brian Edwards to see if there's anybody that wants to comment to it? All right, uh, this is a moderator at the direction of the board. I've opened up the Q and A feature for public comment. Uh, members of the public, if you would like to make a comment on this item, please click that Q and A icon located at the bottom right hand corner of the WebEx screen. I'll go ahead and pause a moment to allow the public time to access that Q and A panel and submit their requests. All right, seeing none, would you like me to close that Q&A panel? You know, Madhuri, can we keep it open? Because we have this oh, sure. item. Is that okay? We're going to keep it open for probably um, this one more open public comment, and then we can close it just because we're going to get to that in just a second. Of course. Okay, thank you, Sarah. Okay, and the second item we have for public comment is uh, from AOTA. And we have, I think, three pages. Um, of suggested edits when uh, based off last week, our, our, our previous meeting regarding 2570.4. So um, knowing that we can't discuss it here unless it's on a future agenda item, is that the will of the board to bring this forward to a future meeting? Pardon me, if I may. 
Yes. Um, that that, that uh, public comment is not under public comment for items not under the agenda. It actually goes with item 16, which Correct. is on the agenda. Ah. Regarding BNP um, code section amendments. Thank you. Oh, so this goes with number 16. Correct. Thank you. Um, Pre President Pavlovich, this is board member Miller. I, I have a request if I may, mm -hmm. um, although it can go either way as stated by by legal in terms of making a motion or not. Consistently, we we used to make motions. Could we just in terms of getting board consensus, it, although you decide the agenda and the final, could we get to the practice of making the motion on these items for the entire board? Sure. So that the entire board can have a a very specific accounting of their consensus and weighing in on this. So if it's all right, I'd like to make a motion. Yeah, please go ahead. Okay. I'd like to make a motion that we put for public comment on the item, the letter by OTAC um, President uh, Bryant Edwards for future agenda item. Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. second. Uh, this is this is legal, if I may. Mm -hmm. I thought that this particular letter was actually to be on a. It's it's already on this agenda, so it doesn't need to be placed on a future agenda. Uh, so this therefore, it's just uh, in the incorrect uh, spot. Oh, oh, no, there's two letters from there's oh. two letters from OTAC, Helen, if I may. Okay. This is a different topic than the previous one. The previous one that we are going to discuss today is about ethical considerations. Okay. This is about supervision. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, there was a motion. Thank you, Helen. Thank you, Denise. There was a motion by Denise, a second. I think I heard Richard first. Um any public comment regarding um, the motion, I have to open that back up since we did a formal motion. Uh, this is the moderator. Uh, members of the public, if you would like to make a comment on this item, please click that Q and A icon located at the bottom right hand corner of your WebEx screen. I'll go ahead and pause a moment to allow the public time to access that Q and A panel and submit their requests. All right, this is the moderator. Uh, it appears there are no requests for public comment. Would you like me to close that Q&A panel? Yes, please. Thank you, moderator. And then um, real quick, could I get a mic check from board member Doe? I'm here. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Wonderful. Secretary Marcos, could we take um, a vote on the motion on the on the floor right now about including the uh, letter from Brian Edwards to a future agenda item, please? Of course. Richard Bookwalter. Yes. Lena Doe. Yes. Denise Miller. Yes. Jeff Farrell. Yes. Sharon Pavlovich. Yes. And Beata Morcos. Yes. Motion moves forward and carries to be to a future agenda item. Thank you. Okay. Um. We are going to go to agenda item 5, so we'll reflect that on the screen momentarily, but it, that's kind of a hefty minute item. If we can just gather our documents there and see if there are any board member comments on um, review and vote on the approval of the May 2021st um, board meeting minutes. It's long. This one's a hefty document, so just kind of wanted to open up to our colleagues to see if there's any, um, you know, any discussion. Motion. I, I do have a couple of things, but I'm, I'm going to wait to open it up to our board members. Are there any comments? Uh, this is Richard. I have a, I have a slight things on page 8 and page 35. I don't know if we want to go. You know, progressively through it or how you want to handle that. No, let's go. You have the pages, Richard. Do you want to start with page 8? Yeah, on page 8. Can we bring it up? Moderator or somebody, can we bring page eight up? Wait. 
That's page four. Yeah, I know you're. I know you're trying. <laughs> the lag time in the yeah goes too far. It goes too far. Um, just uh, on page eight in the the first bill discussed. One more page, please. Thank you. Uh, AB 339, uh, my, I mentioned there in the sec in the paragraph, Denise Miller, Jeff Ferrer, and Beata Marcus voiced their support of the bill because it increased accessibility to the public. I said Richard Bookwalter stated that if it passed, he favored the bill. I meant to, uh, I believe that it should uh, read um, the current language. It sounds otherwise. It sounds like I, I would be in favor of the bill only if it if it passed. That sounds sound a little bit silly. But I, I think um, it, if the current language passed because the bill was still changing, that's so. If it, the, the word it could be changed to the current language. Thank you. Um. And then on page thirty five. Oh, not 35. Wait, I'm sorry. That's the wrong. I apologize. That's not the right page. 31. Page 31. I'm sorry. Um, under item 10, um, the, the third paragraph under item 10 set, recounted uh, where it says Richard Bookholder recounted the past issues between the board and it could involve advanced practices. I'm just wondering if we could add to the end of that sentence after advanced practices and the distinction between education and training. And the distinction between education and training, because I wasn't trying to say there were issues with advanced practices and the ACO guidelines. I mean, I, I guess I did was, but that's always been the, the concern. This, uh, Richard, this is Heather. So just to clarify, involved advanced practices and the distinction between education and training. That's what I was thinking. Oh, okay, perfect. I just wanna make sure we captured that. Thank you. Thank you. If, and I, I'm, if anybody has an issue with that, please let me know. I was. Just proposed changes. Were those all of them, Richard? That's it. Okay. Um, I think Heather or some Jody, somebody is moving that. Uh, can we go to page sixteen when you have a, a moment? Okay, in the scroll down one more paragraph where it says President Pavlovich found. Right under, um, we can't visually see it yet, but it's right under the paragraph um, under Denise Miller wanted right under that it says Pre President Pavlovich found in the third sentence. It says, Ms. Pavlovich said that it was uh, her view that the context of the language surrounded trauma. Instead of reform, it's informed, informed care, I-N-F-O-R-M-E-D. Um, this is Heather. Uh, one moment, please. The, um, it looks like this isn't loading properly. So okay. Just one moment, please.
Uh, this is Heather. Um, I did want to uh, clarify that the um, page 16 of the minutes is showing. And although um, we can, as we share the materials, we can move around in it, but you can also move around in your screen. So it could be perhaps that um, you need to scroll down a bit on, on your screen. Try that. Thank you. Um, this is a moderator uh, board president. You were muted. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you, Sarah. Um, Heather, I didn't know if you caught that or um, the suggestion. Are we okay with 16? Uh, well, uh, I didn't catch the suggestion because I was trying to figure out why it wasn't displaying on the screen. So if you could please repeat that, I would appreciate it. Sure. In this uh, President Pavlovich third sentence right in the middle where it says surrounded trauma reform care. The word reform, I meant um, it could to say. Was, could you identify the bill, please? The AB 1361, Rubio. Okay, that you're that you're okay thank yeah. you. Uh huh. And um, in that paragraph, it's uh, the third one, one, two, second paragraph, really, um, where it starts off President Pavlovich, right in the middle where it says trauma reform care. It's just trauma informed care. Replace reform with informed? Correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, that's all I have. Um, any other board members have anything on the minutes? No? Okay. Moderator, can we open it up? To oh, I'm so sorry. What was that? No, I was just trying to get to my unmute. I said I'm fine. I don't have anything to add. Okay, let's um, moderator. Can we open up for public comment regarding the minutes, please? All right, this is the moderator and at the direction of the board. I've opened up the Q and a feature for public comment members of the public. If you have a comment on this item, please click that Q and a icon located at the bottom right hand corner of your Webex screen. I'll go ahead and pause a moment to allow the public time to access that Q and a panel and submit their requests. All right, seeing none, would you like me to close that Q&A panel? Moderator, is it okay to keep it open for the next two? We're going to review two more minutes after this. Is that okay? Sure thing. Okay, thank you. Um, we'll keep it open even though we'll be scrolling, so that, that'll be good. Um, any motion on the minutes for May 2021st from the board members? This is Richard. Uh, I move that we, the board, uh, adopt the minutes uh, as amended with for um, the teleconference board meeting on May twentieth and twenty first, twenty twenty one, and for give the executive officer. Permission to make non substantive further non substantive changes. Thank you, Richard. There's a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, I think Lena squeezed it right before Jeff. I heard it her voice really. So, um, we'll do a, mo a motion and then a second with Lena. Um, secretary Marcos, can we take a vote on the on the May 20, 21st me meeting minutes? Excuse me. Yes, Richard Bookwalter. Yes, Lena. Do. Denise Miller? Yes. Jeff Farrell? Yes. Sharon Pavlovich? Yes. And Beata Marcos? Yes. Thank you, Beata. The motion carries to approve the minutes for May 2021st. Okay. And next, we will review and vote on approval of the September 13, 2021st minutes. And I'll open it up for board member comments.
if, if, if there are no comments, I would move that we adopt the minutes for the um, September 13th, 2021 board meeting uh, and permit the executive officer to make non substantive changes. I'll second that. Okay, um, can we open it up for public comment and just see if there's any? Thank you. There's a motion and a second. Uh, are there any public comments regarding the meeting minutes for September 13, 2021? Uh, this is a moderator. Members of the public, if you would like to make a comment on this item, please click that Q&A icon located at the bottom right hand corner of your WebEx screen. I'll go ahead and pause a moment to allow the public time to access the Q&A panel and submit their requests. All right, seeing none, would you like me to close that Q&A panel? Oh, I apologize, we have another board meeting minute, so I'll keep it open um, okay. until after that one. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah, I appreciate that. Um, we had a motion by Richard to adopt, and then a second by, I think it was Beata. Yes. And Secretary Marcos, can we take a vote for the September 13, 2021 minutes? Of course. Richard Bookwalter. Yes. Lena Doe. Denise Miller. Yes. Jeff Farrell. Aye. Sharon Pavlovich. Yes. Beata Morcos. Aye. Okay, that's um, the motion carries for adopting of the minutes September 13, 2021. Um, lastly, the review, uh, any discussion prior to a motion being made and so we can go to public and then take our vote after. Um, any motion on the, excuse me, any discussion on the October 21st, 2021 meeting? Uh, President Pavlovich, I have a question, but it's actually on the, on what we just voted on, um, on page six of the September meetings. Um, if you want this to go to a future agenda item, just let me know or if it's covered somewhere. But it was brought up in public comment that DCA reported there's amendments to the Bagley Keen Open Meetings Act. Do we have an update on that or will we get an update in the next two days if if now is not the time you to provide that? I'm just curious where that issue's at. Mm, let me Heather, do you have any comments? And Denise, you're commenting to um, the public on, section on number six, page, page six. six, September 13th, 2021, under public comment E. This is Heather. Um, that is covered under item 13. Great. For the legislation that passed. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both. Okay. Any discussion on October 21st meeting before we a motion? Any discussion? Okay, if no discussion, is there any public comment on the October 21st meeting minutes? We need to make a motion first before we go to public comment. You know, I think I'm doing it wrong, Lynn. I think I'm supposed to do discussion and then ask for public comment and then a motion. Correct, guys? Okay. Did I get it wrong again? Well, I think we vote first and then go to public comment. I mean, okay. we, uh, we, we, yeah, after the motion, public comment, and then we vote. Sorry. Yeah, board okay, is that? But board discussion, then motion, then public comment, then vote. Yeah. Okay, so we do need a motion. <laughs> I, I, I move that we approve the October 21st board meeting with okay. the with what also Richard said about giving the executive director the option to make changes of not staff them. I'll second. There was a motion and a second. And so now any public comments regarding the minutes on October 21st, excuse me. Uh, this is the moderator and members of the public. If you would like to make a comment on this item, please click that Q and A icon located at the bottom right hand corner of your WebEx screen. I'll go ahead and pause a moment to allow the public time to access the Q and A panel and submit their requests.
All right, seeing none, um, would you like that Q&A panel closed? Yes, moderator, thank you. Um, so we had a motion by Lina and a second by Beata, correct? On yeah. the floor? Okay, if we can take a, a vote, Secretary Marcos? Yes. yes. Richard Bookwalter? Yes. Lena Doe? Aye. Denise Miller? Yes. Jeff Farrell? Aye. Darren Pavlovich? Yes. Beata Marcos? Yes. Okay, motion carries to adopt the approval of October 21st, 2021 meeting minutes. Um, thank you, everybody. Okay, um, agenda item number eight, report an update from Department of Consumer Affairs. Um, Carrie Holmes, Deputy Director of Board and Bureau is here to discuss um, some items. And, and Carrie, I was gonna invite you to Jump on board and please share some some thoughts on agenda item number 8. Thank you, board president Pavlovich and board members. I am Carrie Holmes, deputy director of board and bureau relations at the department of consumer affairs. Thank you for inviting me to provide a department update. DCA appreciates all board members and staff who have continued to serve through the pandemic that has affected us all in many ways. We are working together to find the right balance of staying connected and productive while also staying safe and healthy. DCA and all its boards and bureaus continue to look to the future and use lessons learned to identify long-term efficiencies and policy changes. Staff are working in the office to provide the most effective consumer protection and public service, while also utilizing telework where appropriate. DCA is assembling a, assembling a task force to help the department create a telework policy that will provide further clarity and structure for managers and staff. To combat the spread of COVID-19 and protect vulnerable communities, California has implemented enhanced safety measures for state employees and workers in healthcare settings. State employees must show proof of vaccination or participate in regular COVID-19 testing. DCA's testing program kicked off in early October with the launch of the DCA Headquarters One pilot site. Select programs are designated to test at Headquarters 1 and the list of programs recently expanded due to the capabilities of the site. Board and committee members must follow health and safety protocols if they plan to visit a DCA location or attend an in-person board meeting. Members must verify vaccination or follow testing protocols. Please communicate any plans for in-person meetings as soon as possible so DCA can assist with coordination of teleconference options, vaccination verification and COVID-19 testing. DCA recognizes the difficulty of planning for future meetings as the pandemic continues to evolve. As the law stands today, remote meetings are allowed until January 30th, 2022, after which time the meetings will need to be in person in accordance with the Open Meetings Act. We don't know what additional changes to the law may be coming, but I think we all recognize their benefits to remote meeting options such as increased public participation, cost savings, and a lower carbon footprint due to reduced travel. DCA encourages boards and bureaus to continue utilizing remote meetings this year to protect the health of staff, board members, and the public. We will keep you updated on any additional changes to the meeting requirements. Now I'd like to provide some updates on board and bureau relations activities. In addition to appointments, BBR provides training and support for board members and staff. In the past 18 months, BBR has hosted almost monthly virtual brown bag discussions where executive officers and depending on the subject board presidents can share best practices and review updates and guidance from DCA. Recently, we had a brown bag focused on per diem and travel. I'd like to share some best practices that were discussed at this training as I know the board will be discussing per diem later on the agenda. As you know, for some practice acts, BNP code section 103 provides for a 100 per day per diem. Many individuals are surprised to learn that the law is fairly brief and details must be set forth in board and bureau policy. Serving on a board committee or commission really is an act of public service. We all know the hours and effort it takes to be a good member. Per diem are, and travel are planned for within the board's budget and reported out in public meetings. As stewards of the board's budget, I know your board has been working to ensure a transparent and consistent policy is in place to guide you. 
DCA's recommendation as you finalize reports, policy, and forms is to set clear, consistent expectations that have multiple layers of accountability built in. What you decide and put forth needs to work not just for this board, but these individuals, but for future members and staff as well. DCA's recommendation for per diem is that it should be clearly and simply accounted and documented, signed by the member, signed by the board president, then double checked and processed by board staff. Clear expectations for timely submittal and processing should be in place to avoid any delays that could create extra work or unexpected hits to the budget. This really is a team effort. I want to acknowledge the work and attention that your board is putting to ensure you have a clear, consistent policies and forms, setting a strong foundation, not just for this board, but for future boards and staff as well. If any members have any questions or would like more clarity, please don't hesitate to ask. I will be in attendance both days. I'd also like to acknowledge the work of the board to combat recent scams that have been affecting licensees at many boards. DCA and the board have shared information about these scams on both our websites and social media. Please take a moment to read those fraud alerts and be aware of the scams and how to protect yourself and other licensees from malicious individuals. And as a final reminder, 2021 is a mandatory sexual harassment prevention training year. This means all employees and board members are required to complete the training this year, which is rapidly approaching its end. Board members will now access the training through the Learning Management System, or LMS, which is DCA's training portal. We have created profiles for each of you in the LMS, and your executive officers knows the steps you will need to take the training. Board and Bureau Relations is also happy to assist with any questions or concerns you have about the LMS. As always, Board and Bureau Relations is here to help. If there's anything we can do to assist, please reach out. This concludes my presentation and I'll hand it back over to Board President Pavlovich. Thank you so much, Terry, for coming today and informing us a lot of really good information. Are you open to questions at the moment? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I have uh, just one um, regarding, it was nice to hear the, the meetings for you know, resuming after January of 2022. I do have a question though, in order, is there a way, um, I understand the open meetings app, has there been any discussion on how to keep compliance with that, but at the same time kind of have this hybrid model, if you will, you know, for all the me me the suggested benefits of, you know, WebEx, you know, car decreased carbon footprint, increased participation, those kinds of things. Has there been any discussion on how we might comply with like a hybrid model or we meet sometimes and then sometimes we're on WebEx to help with all the aforementioned benefits? Is, is do we know anything that's in place or are they just going to all automatically roll to be um, in person uh, starting January of next year? There is some uncertainty about what will happen after January. I, I do know that there is great interest across the state legislature administration in recognizing those benefits of having some remote meeting options. Um, but there have not been decisions made or anything put out uh, at this point about the future. Um, I, you know, so it, it's difficult, uh, like I said, to plan for the future when we don't know. Um, there may be additional changes, but I don't know the timing of those changes. Um, but DCA certainly uh, it supports the idea of having some flexibility there while remaining transparent and accessible to the public, because as as we've seen, you know, sometimes more public even do come to a remote meeting. So we hope to have so, information sooner rather than later. But <laughs> so there looks like there's a goal, and it's still kind of a wait and see approach because. Like you said, uh, the COVID-19 is still evolving and we're transitioning to stages almost monthly now. So it's kind of a wait and see approach, but we have a goal. Okay. Thank you, Carrie. Um, I'm going to open it up to any of our board members to see if have they have any questions for Carrie while she's here. No, no questions. Thank you for the update. And it's nice to hear from uh, the department what's going on. So thank you. Thank you, Jeff. No comments for Carrie from the board. Okay, I'll open it up just for a public comment to see if they want to share anything. Moderator, is that okay?
All right, uh, this is a moderator and at the direction of the board, I've opened up the Q and a feature for public comment. Members of the public, if you would like to make a comment on this item, please click that Q and a icon located at the bottom right hand corner of your Webex screen. I'll go ahead and pause a moment to allow the public time to access the Q and a panel and submit their requests. All right, seeing none, would you like me to close that Q&A panel? Yes, moderator, thank you. Carrie, thank you so much. It's nice to know that you're going to be hanging out today and tomorrow. Thank you. For, I know you're really busy. We appreciate your time. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you so much. Okay, there is no public comment. The moderator is closing that out. And we will go to, let me check the time when they pick. Okay. Um, so items number nine and ten are they are mis they're not supposed to be there. Well, they're going to be there for our December meeting, not today. They weren't intended to be here. If I'm correct, right, Heather? I just want to make sure agenda item nine and ten are for our next board meeting, not for this one. Correct? Yes. Yeah. My my apologies to the board with the closeness of the sunset committee meetings and the board meeting. That was actually a holdover from the ten twenty one meeting a couple of weeks ago. So uh, my apologies for the mistake in including those. Okay, thank you, Heather. Thanks for clarifying. Um, with that, we will move to agenda item number 11, update on occupational therapy workforce study conducted by the California Community College's Chancellor's Office. Um, I must say it was really nice to see the final report. We've been waiting for this for quite some time. Um, we've had little bits and pieces, but to see it in its entirety um, was exciting. I'm, I'm gonna kind of nerd out a little bit on um, the executive summary, kind of the highlights and the key points that they made regarding, you know, the job outlook. Uh, I wasn't aware that the Clovis site had opened up, so that's a Fort School looking um, like there's still, a, in, the demand is still increasing and we're still be able to supply that for the most part. Um, looking at the age kind of, um, just the differences in age and the needs between the degrees and what they like between associates or bachelors and kind of an overpowering sense that everyone would really kind of like to have a bridge program. And I know when um, Ada Boone Hurl was here, um, she kind of really highlighted that to, she wanted to get some information on what that need was. And I think in here it was something like 76% of those said they would really like to have a bridge program. So um, I think this will help inform and just a lot of positioning um, uh, you know, just looking at the workforce and what is needed, I know from perspective, not only education, but even jobs and work site. Um, so I really appreciated seeing it in its entirety. Um, did I, were there any other board comments regarding um, the occupational therapy workforce study for the OTAs in the state of California? Hi, um, Sharon, I have one comment on the great, great work, by the way, great information. And my, um, if not today, can there be some point where we as a board discuss what the outreach to different um, schools can be on this particular, that have the OTA programs um, so that we are, or, or if that's already taken place so that we're in front of Santa Ana College and Stanbridge and um, telling them how to use this document? Because this is a lot of evidence um, and it's more data collected, I, I believe, from following the numbers than than a recent study that was done just a couple years ago by AOTA. Board Member Lynn, just to ask for specifics, just to see, just to reach our um, OTA educational institutions to see like how they're receiving the information and those kinds of things, like a letter or. I don't mean in a letter. I mean actually in like a Zoom. Oh, do we need to wait? Is she is. Is she still here, moderator? Oh, hi. Um, no, I, I mean more like a, my thought, if you're asking for the discussion, my thought was more like a Zoom to go over the results. There also could be opportunities to present this at the OTAC conference, things like that. Yeah, I think I like the idea of the OTAC conference and putting it as part of, um, you know, kind of open discussion educational forum. I, I really like that idea, actually. That then we need to get out there as part of our strategic plan to help with outreach. I think 
putting it for um, some kind of presentation or open forum discussion would be nice. Um, and in lieu, of, um, well, I'll hold just for a second, Board Member Miller, to see if anybody else has any comments or if she wanted to make a motion. Right. Board, board Member Farrell here. I just wanted to make a couple comments. Uh, you know, I know you mentioned the ADA, and ADA did a fabulous job on some of this as well as the other. If, if many of you recall, the, the genesis of this was when we were tackling where Steel's work challenges and alternative um, education. And we were talking about how do we do things and actually get an accurate census on what the future demands were going to be because we felt that, you know, how they were currently conducting um, workforce needs wasn't really um, providing an accurate picture of what really was facing us with an aging population and a decrease in uh, access to uh, you know, education in the space. And, um, you know, Heather happened to attend a, a conference, I, if I recall well, and she got to talking with this group about the challenges we were tackling and they found this. And it was, you know, it was a period of time we waited, but man, I think this is a great report for us. And, uh, and I do agree with Denise. I think that the data that came out of this is probably the most accurate. And um, so I'm thanking everybody, both not just Ada and, um, you know, Heather, but the other subcommittee folks that stuck to this while we were challenged, dealing with some challenging things that were facing, um, you know, the uh, citizens of California who are going to be needing these services and the people that would be uh, providing them. So thanks. Thanks again. This is great. Thanks, Jeff. I know. I, I hope it helps inform some of those options that were available for OTAs that they were trying to look at, too. I wonder if it's going to do that. So it has a lot of power behind it. Thank you, Jeff. Any other board member comments? Uh, this is Richard. I just wanted to again uh, to reiterate the thanks to the to the board and uh, all the people, the community college uh, folks, and everybody who put this together. Um, I, you know, I was struck by the demographic in, in the and the student debt information and the the detail, you know, with the demographics and, and everything. So I, I, there's a lot here to look at that to help guide future consider considerations for policies and um, uh, and programs. So um, um, and for us to use in board decision making too about some of the regulations that we do. So I, I appreciate that. And that's all Thank that's you, Richard. Comment. Yeah, there was that I forgot that part about um, and thank you for bringing that up the cost, right? The debt and the multiple jobs and, and the, the samples that were shared here. Thank you, board member Bookwalter. Any other comments? Denise and Lou, on your comment, did you want to make a motion? Regarding something about educational outreach or meeting at OTAC or something like that. Just kind of wanted to follow through. Um, so I'd be happy to, but if I may, would it, wouldn't the motion be that we, um, do we feel like we've discussed it enough as a board to just put the motion forward for the OTAC, or do you want me to make the motion to bring it back and have a discussion about education and outreach of this report? Oh, that's a great question. I, I feel comfortable with that, but I was also, or I could do both, whatever you want. What do you think is needed? Well, the OTAC conference has already passed, so it would be it would be a moot point. I guess at this point we do have time between now. Oh, I need to moderator. Let me know if are, are you there, President Pavlovich? Yes, yes, and okay. we can hear you, Denise. Okay. Um, I don't know if you go off of other people's screens, but you go off of mine. So just to let you know, that's why I pause it mm -hmm. to make sure that you're. Um, but anyhow, uh, we have time until the February meeting. I could easily just um, think of more ideas and bring it back into a motion there. I just wanted to raise it here while we were on the topic. Maybe we could keep this as a placeholder. Um, maybe between now and February, our public will know more about this following this meeting. And then we'd have a much more uh, fruitful discussion at that time and really figure out what that motion would look like. And, and that's only because we have the time. The okay. OTAC conference has passed. Not much is happening between now and February. Okay. That, that like would to... be my recommendation. Okay, let's leave this item as a standing item on our... Um... Thanks for asking. Yeah, thank you, Denise. So we'll keep it as a standing item on our agenda. So 
um, when we're ready, we can discuss it and move on and take action if that's okay. okay and can we, um, oh, so sorry, what did I miss? This is Heather. Hi, Heather. Hi, you know, so um, I, I, uh, I wanted to share one thing and, ma and make a suggestion. Okay. So in addition to this ne workforce needs assessment, um, the other thing is that the folks who did the research and um, in the Dropbox, it indicates there's 31 people, but there were additional documents that I have not yet had a chance to review. And some of the um, information might be very helpful. And for example, there is the survey of the current job characteristics, demographics, educational background, future plans, and OT questions about what OTs asked about OTAs. And each of these, or several of these, I didn't have a chance to look at them all, but several of these Excel documents have multiple sheets within. And so there, I believe there's a lot more information than what's just in this report, you know, as, as great as it is. And so I like the point about leaving it as a standing item and or, you know, uh, putting it onto the February agenda for discussion. But one other thought is since there's now four community colleges and six uh, for profits, and especially since the for profits do have, you know, multiple cohorts, if, if the board was interested um, to the point about what Denise said about holding a meeting, there's time for us to invite the program directors and field work coordinators for those 10, 11 schools for a meeting, let's say late January or early February to share this information and get some feedback. And then if they had any suggestions or requests of the board, there'd be time for board staff to put that together and bring that to the for the February meeting as well. I, I just wanted to share that. Thank you. That's a great recommendation. President Pavlovich, would you like a motion on that? Yeah, I think she probably needs one, right? Heather, that'd be great. Heather, we can make a motion. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Of course. Okay. I make a mo I make a motion that we um, move forward that our action item on this report is to coordinate a meeting with the OTA colleges, there are six, the program directors and field work coordinators sometime between now and before the uh, sometime before the uh, February meeting 2022. Second. Uh, the motion, there was a motion by Denise, a second by Jeff. Okay, let's do um, any other board discussion. If not, moderator, can we prepare to ask um, the public for any thoughts? This is the moderator and at the direction of the board, I have opened up the Q&A feature for public comment. Members of the public, if you would like to make a comment on this item, please click that Q&A icon located at the bottom right hand corner of your WebEx screen. I'll go ahead and pause a moment to allow the public time to access the Q&A panel and submit their requests. All right, seeing none, would you like me to close that Q&A panel? Yes, please moderate, thank you. Okay, um, Secretary Marco, there was a motion by uh, board member Miller and a second by, I believe, Lena Doe, was it? Oh my goodness. It was Jeff. It was Jeff Farrell. It was Jeff Farrell. Um, could we take um, a vote? Yes, yes. Richard Bookwalter. Yes. Lena Doe. Hi. Denise Miller. Yes. Jeff Farrell. Hi. Sharon Pavlovich. Yes. And Beata Marcus, yes. Yes, motion carries for discussion. Thank you for the motion. That's that's great. I'm excited that Board Member Miller posited that. And then we had additional thoughts for our executive officer, Heather Martin. Thank you. Um, okay, just a couple things, and then I think we'll take a break. At number 12, Heather, if I remember correctly, is also not supposed to be on there. It's a Discussion that was also from carryover. Correct. There's not an agenda item 12 um, for this one. Correct. Uh, actually, the, so the, um, there were no meeting materials for this item. Mm -hmm. This is an item the board requested to be a standing item. Okay. And the, um, uh, the report is that from the map displayed at the September, um, 
13th meeting that there has been no changes in the states where it was enacted and pending. And so they are still short of the 10 states needed to uh, trigger the compact. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. so the, there was like seven, seven or eight, right? They were almost there. Okay, so there's no change. There were nine, nine there of were, 10. Were there nine? Yes, oh my goodness. Nine of 10. Okay. Yeah, we were yeah. waiting for it to, Wisconsin. Wisconsin was the potential 10th. Right. So they're not going to that was the only one identified um, as pending, but there are four states where the bill carried over to 2022, Nebraska, Iowa, Illinois, and South Carolina. So there, you know, it, it's, it is Wisconsin was the pending one, but since those other four states are carrying their legislation over to next year, I mean, you know, there, there's an increase in the opportunity. Okay. So that was a verbal report. Go ahead, Denise. Is it possible, um, Heather Martin, and I know Richard's also on that committee, but for the purposes of communicating with the entire board, in, in the the previous minute, one of the previous minutes, Dan Logidson um, actually indicated that he believed that this would pass by the end of the year. My simple question is this, because we don't meet until February, um, and although California is not on that docket, that is timely information. Do you do you have time to put a call into him and just find out if anything, if that's still on par, or do you suggest we individually reach out to him as um, professional members and not board members? What's the best course of action to, to just get some timely info on that from him? So uh, this is Heather. So to clarify, to find out when the 10 state threshold is met, yeah, he made a comment in one of our minutes that he believed it would pass right. by the end of this year. So my specific question is, does he still believe that now that we know four states got carried over to 2022, does he still think that it's going to pass this year? Or because what that tells us as a board is we have we have more time to think about this. So I don't, uh, with Wisconsin being the pending one, and I don't know when their legislative session uh, ends, and the fact that those other four states say carried over to next year, I, uh, you know, I don't know, but I would guess that it's not likely that it's going to happen this year. Okay. I think they were hinging that on Wisconsin, and I think, I can't remember what state it was that he said one of them, like, it got completely derailed and they were, you know, taken aback. Um, so what the, because that compact has been finalized, there's really not any more like ongoing work group um, meetings. But what we can do is um, I will reach out to him and ask him if there is a state that passes it and it triggers the compact to let us know so that we can report that to you guys. That'd be Does awesome. That Thank you. That Good works. Call. Thank you. Thank you, Denise. Thank you, Heather. Are there, is there any other uh, board member comment regarding the verbal update on the licensure compact? Uh, I just, this Richard, I just like to point out that the web there, the OT compact website, which I don't have the address up in front of me, does have pretty, it's there, they keep it pretty up to date. So you can also look um, online to find information regarding it, uh, uh, you know, 24 hours a day, basically. So. So that's another way of getting information about the status. Oh, that's good to know. Thank you, Richard. Any any other board member comment? If not, um, moderator, can we open it up for public comment to see if they have anything to say regarding um, the update on the licensure compact? This is the moderator and at the direction of the board, I've opened up the Q&A feature for public comment. Members of the public, if you would like to make a comment on this item, please click that Q&A icon located at the bottom right hand corner of your WebEx screen. I'll go ahead and pause a moment to allow the public time to access the Q&A panel and submit their requests. All right, looks like we have a request from uh, Kristen Neville. Kristen, I will request to unmute your microphone. Please click that unmute me button when the prompt appears and you'll be given three minutes to speak in a 30 second warning. I am requesting to unmute your microphone now. All right, you are unmuted. 
Hi everyone, um, and thank you for the public comment opportunity. The the compact website, since Mr. Bookwalter brought it up, is otcompact.org, and we have a, as he said, um, Council of State Governments, who Mr. Logsdon works for, keeps that very well up to date for us. And yes, it is Wisconsin that we're waiting to see if that bill passes. I don't know what their timeline is in terms of when the session concludes or not, but uh, you all are correct. That is the state we're waiting on at the moment. Um, we are planning for to um, meet with a number of other states to get them to introduce legislation that once the sessions begin in 2022. So if that bill somehow falls through, uh, we're planning on uh, potentially getting a number of other states uh, to introduce a bill next year. So maybe it'll pass next year, but um, that's where we are. So thank you. You're welcome to reach out to me or to Chuck Wilmarth at any time if you have further questions. Thank you, Kristen. I know there were goals like Board Member Miller had said that they were looking forward to end of the year, but hopefully soon, especially because it looks like everything's kind of in transition. So thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that. Um, okay. Any um, any other discussion or any other motions regarding um, the work? I'm so sorry. The licensure compact, other than to keep I it. I have a quick question for. I have a question for Kristen. A follow up question. May yeah. I may I ask, uh, Kristen? Of course. Did, I know that. You know, the Council of State Governments is kind of working on a contract with AOTA um, and NBCOT to work on this compact. Do, I mean, maybe this is a delicate question, but every, it, whenever we call on Daniel Logs, Dan Logsdon's time, does he charge you guys? <laughs> I'm just wondering if that results in a billable time to you guys. Uh, that's a great question, Richard. Um, I don't think it does. Uh, we, we do have some kind of an agreement with the Council of State Governments to uh, take advantage of Mr. Logsdon's experience. And I would imagine that the uh, his time and, and such compensation for that experience is just built into that contract. It's um, I'm almost I don't know a lot about how this went because I was not a part of the negotiation, but. I'm almost positive he's not on an hour by hour billable hours type basis. Uh, so I would not be a con that would not be a concern for the board. I think that that is, but that's I that's a great question, especially given as an AOTA member and a dues paying AOTA member. I just want to make sure. sure. That, that oh sure, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't think that's how uh, our working with him. That that's how. Yeah, I don't think he sends us an invoice after an hour long yeah. webinar or anything like that. But uh, I appreciate your uh, conscientiousness. Um, Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Kristen. Any other board uh, comments? Uh, this is a moderator. We do. Oh, I apologize. Um, I thought you were asking for a public comment, but we do have a individual requesting public comment. Oh, please. Yes, sir. Let's go ahead. Um, they did mention that it was for the workforce study. Um, are they allowed to make their uh, comment on that still? I, uh, yes, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, this is Heather for just for process wise. Could we please complete this item and then you can circle back for public comment for item 11 if you don't mind. Sure, no worries. Okay, well, I know um, it doesn't look as are there any other comments regarding um, the licensure compact? I know we have this as a standing item, Heather. So, um, am I understanding correctly that we don't have to have a motion to continue to keep it as a standing item, or do we? No, no, you do not need a motion. Yes, okay. I, I continue to do that until the board says we, you know, we don't need this on the agenda anymore. Okay, so I think if there are no other comments, we can close um, agenda item number twelve out. Is that okay? Okay, it looks like that's okay. So that closes agenda item number 12. And so moderator, I think we can open it up for the public comment on the workforce study. All right, uh, this is the moderator, um, individual Ada Boone. Um, I request to unmute your microphone. You'll be given three minutes to speak in a 30 second warning. Um, please click that unmute me button when the prompt appears on your device. All right, and you are unmuted. Thank you. Um, this is Ada Boone Hurl, COTA Program Director, Sacramento City College. I apologize for my tech issue getting in on the comments earlier. I, I just wanted to make a couple of comments on the workforce study for um, consideration. Uh, in page on page four, the demo where the demographics. Wait, wait, I'm sorry. This is Heather. One moment, please. Could you give me a chance to go there real quick? Certainly. 
Uh, what page was that? Page four, demographics. And moderated, just so you know, it's okay if we go over the three. I, um, Ada's part of this report, so don't worry. She's really good at being mindful of time, even if we go over just a little over, just the FYI. Thank you. I, I had paused the timer. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, go ahead, Ada, and please um, give direction about, you know, higher or lower next page kind of thing. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I, I. I'm struck by the demographics as board member uh, book Walter was, and I would um, be very interested to see how this data compares to the national data provided in the AOTA workforce study. Um, and should the board so desire, I'd be more than happy to for the next meeting, make a comparison document so that we could reflect the or, or explore the unique nature of California's. Um, diversity as it as it maybe to see what it looks like in comparison with the national data. Um, my other um, comment is on page eight, where it is referring to the percentage of OTs supervising OTAs. And there's a pie chart that um, uh, is in in that uh, on that page. Um, and the and the narrative also reflects that 34% of OTs are supervising OTAs. And as discussions continue about um, field work shortages or, or challenges, um, with with only 34% of our available OTs serving as field work supervisors for OTAs, somewhere in there I see an opportunity for some kind of outreach or exploration. Um, about how to increase that number of OTs supervising OTAs uh, in practice and in field work. Um, and my final comment is on page 18, um, looking at the breakdown of public institutions and private institutions. And um, I know that this is a challenge because there is a private college who's operating out of state um, St. Catharines, um, but is doing business in California. And I don't see that that has been captured here. So it made me curious as to were any of the OTA participants from that, from that college and how that influences um, the, the overall data. It just a thought for consideration. Um, and if there are any new colleges from out of state um, working with the same model, I'm not yet aware of that. I haven't had time to look for that. But again, if it is your preference, uh, your desire, I'm, I'm happy to do that exploration. And thank you for going back to allow me to comment. Thank you. Hi, Ada, thank you so much. You, we always value your, your comments. You bring a lot of interesting thoughts and, and move the discussion forward. And so, um, Heather Martin, is it okay that we kind of um, take Ada up on her honor, uh, on her kind of, you know, wish to help and maybe get some other follow through data? Could we kind of do that or do you? Absolutely. And although I, I'm not really sure about the, um, I don't know that I can necessarily share this Dropbox because I was, you know, um, added to it. But in so far as some of the different um, data points, I, I mean, if Ada is not opposed to, you know, uh, paper, because like I said, some of these are Excel and they have multiples. But I mean, I'm, I'm happy to uh, offline uh, schedule something with Ada and uh, give her access to additional information. Does that work, Ada? Yes, that would be very interesting. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you both. Thank you, Ada. Uh, moderator, were there any other comments since we were on this from the public regarding this measure? This, I'm sorry, yeah, this uh, agenda item. Uh, this is a moderator and it appears there are no further requests for public comment. Would you like me to close that Q&A panel? Yes, please, thank you. In lieu of, um, and to our, my board mates, in lieu of um, Ada's comments, was there anything that we, we wanted to say or anything else? Are we good to move forward or are there any closing remarks regarding? Um, that discussion. No, okay, thank you, Ada. We want to thank you on behalf of the board and I'm looking forward to, um, what you and Heather kind of, um. You know, 
plan on doing to help us move again the conversation forward. So thank you. Um, I wanted to take a pulse on the board. I was thinking that we could do agenda item 13 and then take a 15 minute break. Is that okay with everybody? Sure. Yeah, okay. Let's do um, agenda item 13, update on bills signed by the governor. Um, Heather, is there anything um, that you want to share that we should uh, otherwise, uh, I mean, that just help us understand? It looks like these have all been signed by the governor. Is there anything that you wanted to share? Uh, no, I I did want to, um, thank you. I, I didn't have anything extra I wanted to share. I did want to let folks know because I realize um, some folks view the information that's on the WebEx screen when it's shared and others go to the board's website. Mm -hmm. And so even though the board members were provided this summary docket, uh, some summary document and then snapshots of the um, beginning of the ledge council digest, like in a paper format, the, the members of the public were not provided that instead on the board's website is a link to the bills. And that was due to um, limitations on making the bills listed here. Uh, to make them ADA compliant and accessible to the, the public. So I, I just wanted to clarify on that in case somebody, you know, had if uh, somebody had any questions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. Yeah, it was, I remember we had that, that's why the minutes were so long in May because we had a lot of bills before us to discuss and it's nice to see now it's been signed. And so I'll open it up for any board member comment regarding these chapter legislative bills. Richard? Yeah, hi. I just have a question um, again. Uh, I, I, I couldn't see how any of these would necessarily require a change in regulation by the board. Uh, and I imagine we get instruction from DCA if that were the case, because none of these are specific to our board. Um, but I just wonder if there's any sense that of any of any need for regulatory activity from the board, you know, decision making from the board on to enact any of these that, that you know of Heather or Lee. Um. Helen. You are correct. This will not require additional regulations. The, um, for example, the, the waiving of the fees, that's all done behind the scenes back in the, um, in the breeze online system. And, um, it was previously, uh, shared with the board that when the, the bill was uh, being considered that the, you know, department always collects from the boards, the varying, you know, fiscal impact. And we did identify this as a, you know, minimal and absorbable impact. For that 1 specifically, but yes, we, we are, there's nothing required at this time. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. Heather. <laughs> Any other um, discussion on the, the laws that were enacted Board member Miller. Um, I just wanted to clarify earlier, I asked a question about the open meeting act and I, I recognize that that is specific to, um, uh, th that is a different bill than the one I was asking about. I'm asking about assembly bill 885 quirk Bagley keen open meeting act teleconferencing. Um, this is Heather. Uh, so, yes, that did pass and my apologies that that 1 was left out of this um, listing of chaptered bills. Okay, Th thank you for that. Does that affect is that the 1 that that uh, there's an extension until January 2022 is that tied into this bill or is that a different different 1. And I can find the answer and circle back on that. I have it highlighted somewhere here. It's okay, Heather, if you don't have it, I'll, I'll, I'll with the, the quirk, the quirk bill was not chaptered. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you board member Miller. Any other discussions. From our board. No. Okay, if not, moderator, can we open up to see if there's any public comment regarding the chapter legislative bills before us? Uh, this is the moderator, and at the direction of the board, I have opened up the Q and A feature for public comment. Members of the public, if you would like to make a comment on this item, please click that Q and A icon located at the bottom right hand corner of your WebEx screen. I'll go ahead and pause a moment to allow the public time to access the Q and A panel and submit their requests.
All right, seeing none, would you like me to close that Q&A panel? Yes, thank you, moderator. Okay, that, since that was just an update, that closes out agenda item number 13. And as promised, I think we are now headed to a 15 minute break. And just so everyone could plan accordingly, we'll do a 15 minute break now. We are planning on breaking for lunch around 1230, just so everyone can plan their day. Um, we'll see what, uh, how many agenda items we can get through. So we'll have a 15 minute break right now. We'll come back and crank out as much as we can with our discussions and our conversations. Plan on having a lunch break at 12.30 and then we'll go forward from there. So moderator, could you put um, the time, <laughs> um, 15 minutes, we'll return back to our meeting. We'll give everybody a little break. Thank you everyone, see you back in just a bit. Thank you, moderator. Okay, as promised, um, it is 10.39, and I know some people were experiencing some technological difficulties, but um, Secretary Marcos, could we try to see if we have a quorum and make sure we have everybody back? Of course. Richard Bookwalter. Here. Lena Doe. Actually, I don't even see her in uh, as as a panelist, so maybe she dropped out. Um, Denise Miller. Here. Here. Jeff Farrell. Here. Darren Pavlovich. Here. Beata Marcos. Here. Okay, we do have a quorum. I have not heard from Lena Doe other than she might have been experiencing tech. Let me see, just for a second. Okay. Yeah, I'm hoping that she logs on soon because I know we have some some upcoming agenda items. But I know board member Miller's here too, so excuse me. <coughs> we have a quorum. I think, um, excuse me, I have to cough a second. Excuse me. Okay, I, we do have a quorum. I think we should probably just get started. And um, Heather, if you hear of Lena or Piata or any of our members, if you see her pop in, um, that would be helpful. I know Jeff, you would change devices. Excuse me, I keep coughing. Um, but I know you sounded a little crackly. But we'll we'll see how it goes. Just just FYI. Okay. Um, agenda item number 14, discussion on the board's fund condition and possible increase of license renewal and other miscellaneous fees to maintain solvency. Um, Heather, was there anything you wanted to share to start off the discussion? Um, I did want to share that although the board has not decided what to do yet about the fees, um, whether to increase the fees or um, establish new fees. Um, I did reach out to both OTAC and AOTA and ask them to uh, take a look at some of the materials that's there and, um, or, you know, from the past meetings and to discuss amongst themselves and to please let me know what, if anything, would be helpful information to provide. And so, for example, um, when I uh, spoke with uh, Brian Edwards, president of OTAC, um, he did because I he had asked about the you know prior year information, and I referred to him to uh, last meeting material where there's that ten year expenditure history that identifies both the budget authority as well as the actual expenditures to show how much the board has underspent each year for the last ten years. 
So he is going to review that. Um, he also did talk about the um, with the increase in the number of schools and the increase in the number of cohorts some of the schools are having. Um, that he would be interested in uh, historical information regarding um, the increases in licensing population and then a, a parallel um, information about the um, discipline to identify any possible trends that way. Um, I did explain all of that information is available you know, to the public, but certainly it's not been condensed into put into one document and that that is, you know, a, an easy an easy ask. And so um, I also shared that the board, you know, may be making a decision soon. And so just asked for both associations to, you know, give me enough time advance notice of, you know, what would be helpful so that we could have time to meet their needs and then they can, you know, uh, share their more, more, more informed, if you will, you know, comments with, with the board. Okay, thank you, Heather, because I know even before when we revisited this, when we had the first discussion for fees, when we had to raise them, uh, was it 2017? I'm trying to remember the date, but um, it, it, we had all the data. I remember when, before we went biannual, we were playing $150, right, a year. So it was, it was 300 and, you know, if you add up two years anyways, but and we're still not there, right? Even though we changed it and we upped it. So, um, okay, it's good to know that we'll are in discussion with OTAC and AOTA, um, trying to get more information. And with what we have before us, um, colleagues, is there any discussion? Is there, um, especially on the thought of um, fee increases? We, we've seen the fund condition come before us on several board meetings and several iterations. Where are we at with the information that's before us and where are we at with um <clears throat> excuse me, the 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 feeling about increasing license uh fees? And just wanna kinda see what everyone's thoughts are. Or Heather Heather, did you want to report this out first or ask questions? So a lot of this information um was at the uh the prior meeting. Um, it was included um, again, just as a, you know, as a reminder. Um, and again, uh, there, there's actually in this doc in this item, there's no new information that the board hasn't seen. It was really more just as a reminder, but then also in case there were new members of the public that joined that they could also, you know, have this information um, available for their review. Thank you. Yeah, this, so we've seen it multiple times, and so I'm reaching out to my colleagues. Any discussion on on the fund issue, and then as it, as it pertains to the potential increase in licensure fees, anybody? This is uh, Richard. I have a couple. May I, I have a couple comments? <clears throat> One is that, as I recall, last time we had a fee increase discussion, the board had some discussion, you know, discussions over several meetings, and I think we had. Uh, scenarios of, you know, in, you know, if we increase it by, you know, $50 versus a hundred dollars versus $150, whatever, and how that played out, uh, over the fund condition, um, during the, you know, prospect prospectively. Um, so, uh, I would like, I would hope that we could see that at a future meeting to discuss this, you know, cause obviously if you have to have an amount, if you're going to raise a fee, you have to. Have an amount and um, also uh, with regard to the OTAC uh, communication with OTAC and AOTA, the dynamic last time was a little bit, I thought. So, I mean, it was not. Too satisfactory, we did a lot of, we tried to do you know, a bunch of outreach meetings that very few people attended. And then after uh, the membership backlash that AOTA and. AOTA and uh, OTAC started the membership heard about it later, like, the, even though the leadership knew about it. The membership didn't, and then they came back um, on behalf of their membership to ask more questions of the board. So I think it is a good idea to give as much as possible up front, keeping in mind that OTAC and AOTA tend to be a bit reactive uh, when it comes to um, the membership. You know, when their membership starts calling and saying, "Wait a minute, I just found out about this," um, and they all do represent a small, a bit important, important. Uh, subgroup of the licensing population, uh, a minority of the licensing population. So, um, 
you know, having this at a couple of these meetings where people, you know, the public can come um, is important as well. And, and, and maybe there could be a partnership with OTAC and OTA regarding a, some outreach. Um, since our own outreach last time um, still resulted in them coming back and asking for more information. Um, this is Heather. So, um, actually, that was part of my conversation with uh, Bryant um, in terms of identifying, you know, uh, information that would be helpful to them because, uh, you know, like you, I remember it was, you know, under discussion several times, but then the, um, the comments came, you know, a bit later. And so the, I, I'd asked them to not only to, um, not only to um, provide that information, but then to, you know, also if possible to take it to the board. And so um, I also had asked rather than me reaching out to um, individual region directors, I had asked him if that could be something he shares at their leadership meeting to, um, to, you know, ask them, I mean, I, I mean, obviously can't direct them, but ask them if they had the opportunity at um, a video to, or I'm sorry, at a, um, you know, at a region event or region town hall, et cetera, to invite me to not only you could give an update on um, board information, but more specifically, and if they had you know questions about the potential uh, fee increase. And so um, that's one thing. And then also regarding the various uh, scenarios, I um, we did not have a chance to prepare that given that the last meeting was just a couple of weeks ago, but. Um, later on, and, and maybe I should uh, switch to that item, but the it, one of the things was asked about was the um, expenditure information. And so, for example, if, if the board um, doesn't mind for me to uh, switch over, I, or I can just give a verbal, but for example, last fiscal year, we paid $44,000 in credit card fees for licensees to use breeze. Now, on one hand, you know, on an individual basis, if, if, you know, I was renewing a license and needed to pay 4 or $5, you know, that seems reasonable because it's easier than finding my checkbook and pulling it out and mailing in a check. Right. But, um, the board, you know, just as a, you know, policy has agreed to, you know, absorb those fees. Well, 1 thing to note, though, that part of that $44,000 is not just license renewal fees. It's every time someone uses Breeze to pay with a credit card. So, for example, individuals who pay cost recovery, that whether it's $100 a month or $300 a month, the, the fact is that the there's a credit card charge for that. So, somebody could be paying from anywhere from 24 to 36 or more months. Every time they make a payment on Breeze, the board pays the credit card fee for that. Every time a citation is issued and someone doesn't mail a check and they pay with Breeze, there's a credit card charge for that as well. And so certainly the um, there's the option of the um, differing, you know, like you, you could pick and choose. You could say, we're not going to pay any more credit card fees, right? Um, or we're going to only pay uh, license renewal fees, but any other type of payment, folks will have to pay their own. I mean, you have you have some discretion. I guess I just raised this issue because I was a little surprised to know how much in credit card fees the board pays. Also, um, in talking with DCA, because we currently um, are under DCA's main contract with the credit card um, you know, company, that if in fact the board did want to go to that direction, um, a couple of things. One, um, the there would not be an increase to the licensee because I was assured that the credit card fee charged to the individual would be virtually the same, whether it was under the DCA contract where the board absorbed it or whether it was passed on to the individual. Because obviously my first question was, well, DCA has, you know, two and a half million people renewing every couple of years. So, you know, is there the benefit of volume there? Right? And so I said, if they change to our our board only or us and a couple of other boards who wanted to 
pass on the fees, they said that it was more than likely not go up or if so, not much. So I think that's important information to have. The other thing is because the payment of the uh, credit cards is through a contract process, um, the board would need to make that decision fairly soon. And I'm not, I, you know, certainly no later than the February meeting, uh, just for this item specific to the credit card fees, because two things have to happen. One, the contracts office has to amend our name out of the current contract where the fees are paid by the board. And then they have to make a new contract for this board and all the others that want to pass on those fees because we're not the only ones looking at that, right? So that's one thing. The second thing is there has to be a time to uh, make the computer programming changes in Breeze so that those, you know, that happens as well. And so that's that's new text, that's account codes, there's you know, a variety of things. And so um, given those different, those three main things, um, that if the board did want to make that change, it could not happen until July 1 of 2022. Um, any questions about that? I wanted to make a comment, but I, um, Heather, before that, uh, Richard, did, was that, did she help with um, highlighting some of the, issue, the, the comments that you had? Excuse me. Yes, I, I, that, that's that's. Uh, I'm glad to hear about the, the okay. study. Yeah. Okay, Beata, with I saw you pop up. Did you still have a comment? Just wanted I to check. No out. Longer, thank you so much. I no longer have a comment, but then I just realized that Denise disappeared, and I think initially she wanted to comment, but she's been gone. She said that she has to reboot her system, so she missed okay. this entire Heather, um, you know, explanation part. Okay. Um, thank she you. Said, she said that she should be on in the next uh, minute or so, like it's almost there. Uh, I don't know. Okay. Thank you, Biara. Of course. Um, I know, Heather, I just want to pause at those thoughts. I, this is just my opinion and I'd love to have board feedback, but I don't think we should be incurring the cost of those credit card bills. I think that those uh, should reflect, you know, those should be put back on our, um, uh, I mean, that, uh, the people that are signing up our licensees, I, I don't think that's a that's a hefty forty four thousand. Like that's a lot of cost savings if we, you know, and especially that other boards are considering doing the same. Um, I would like to see us pass that cost back on. I don't think that I mean, we should really be incurring that cost. That's like, you know, forty four forty five thousand dollars in savings there. Um, but that's just one opinion on a board of many. So I don't know if anybody else has any thoughts. No, and in lieu of what Heather just said, you know, as far as moving forward, um, knowing the deadline, if you know we were going to change um, information on all the boards and to get on before the deadline, um, no later than February meeting, but definitely so they could enact before. I think you said July, Heather. Um, Richard. Yeah, I mean that's two hundred, um, you know, licensing license fees, or roughly, you know, I mean, think about it. Uh, the, it's like, so, so, I mean, we could, uh, I would be uh, interested in make a, a motion to proceed with, li with, uh, I, I move the, I would, I, I mean, I, I'd be, I would support a motion to explore uh, detaching the, uh, ourselves from that policy of paying the, the credit card fees mm -hmm. and moving into the other contract. Wait, there's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? I haven't, I haven't made a motion yet. Oh, I mean, a motion you would entertain. Okay, sorry, Richard. Um, I would speak in favor of that motion. I see. Thank or you. Or that position, and we could do a motion after we figure out what it would have to look like. Okay. Um, like this is Heather. If I, if I may add, um, uh, so to circle back to something you mentioned earlier, Richard, about providing the varying fees. Um, we will have something for the board for that. And, and you may recall that with the $150 per year cap on the renewal, one of the reasons I'm saying that there would need to be legislation for an additional fee increase is because that $30 would not be enough, right? And so otherwise we could change it in regs and it would take you know a year, a year and a half for that to go into effect. But we will we can provide 
um, scenarios with the varying fees. So that that's one thing that we will do. The other thing is, I was asked though for um, specific um, expenditure reductions, and the document in front of you here shows that I just identified some some lump sums, and the reason for that is because every year the board underspends, and right, and so. And so the time and energy, I guess I would just ask the board the time and energy to do individual, um, you know, line item, you know, expenditures. And I'm gonna just bear with me. I'm gonna switch items here real quick. Oops, wait, let me see. Oh dear. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna ask for somebody to change the uh, orientation. Heather, I, I will get on that right now and change that for you. I know, I'm so sorry. I know you sent me directions, but I'm trying to like read my materials and talk and re review that. So any help you can provide. Okay. So thank you. If you could do um, slides 12, 13, and 14, please. Let me get all of them. Unfortunately, it has to be done individually. Right. So. I know you <laughs> saw that and I was like, oh, dang. Okay. I can barely get one. I don't know if I can get more. So, oops, sorry. I didn't mean to push that down. And then which slide do you want to um, start on? So um, this one's fine. So let me just use this one here. And I'm sorry, I have to close this because I can't. Um... Oh, okay. So anyway, so to the point that the expenditure report has the individual line item, and then you know what what uh, then what oops then what the expense is, and so um, while the board asked for that. Again, we underspend every year and I guess I would just ask, do you really want us to go through this? So, because, for example, this 1 right here, the budget is 4,000. We spent 1100. We're already underspending, right? Equipment. We had 28,000. We spent 10, 8. Now we did spend a little bit more in this fiscal year because the copier didn't hit last fiscal year. But just to to the point, I mean, I want to acknowledge the board's request, but. I mean, the, the amount of time, I guess I would like you to wait, you know, um, do, do you still have that request? And if so, we'll take, you know, this document here and we will, you know, add a new column saying, you know, this is what we project we'll, we'll spend. But I, you know, it's, I just want to have that conversation first, you know, before we really did spend the time. And, you know, also, um, you know, that, that 1021 meeting was just like two weeks ago. So it was, you know, we were a little hard pressed to provide that information, but obviously I know this is a big, um, a big ask. And so it, and it, I understand it's a combination of expenditure reductions, um, as well as the, um, you know, you know, fee increase, but I think I mentioned like a fee increase is not alone is not going to be enough. Right? Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, expenditure reduction is not going to be a, a, enough that we can continue to be frugal in our spending, um, except that again, the, you know, the revenue for many, many years has just not been as much as the expenditures have been, um, despite our underspending, you know, by the, the dollar amounts listed below. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Heather. Um, in lieu of have the comments that Heather just shared, um, further board discussion, um, there's lots of implications for agenda item number 14. Any other person want to weigh some butts? Hi, um, I, I have a question or a comment back to the comments just made by Heather Martin. Um, Heather, I'm, I'm not sure if 1 of those requests from the last meeting came from me, but if it did, I guess what I would say to you is. It doesn't matter. I'm looking for advice from you. It doesn't matter to me how we get there and it's not the request is not intended to add more time to board staff. But if we are, if you are asking us to consider a fee increase, I don't think I can just get there based on. The data that you are providing um, in terms of, um, you know, letting us know that the funds not, I mean, I have to see the details in order to be able to vote for a fee increase so soon in relation. And I recognize it'll be a couple years out, but it is a, a conversation that we've had um, at least during the, the we just had a board increase in 21. We've been talking about it in 18. And my last comment would be 
when I look at the other data you provided compared to the other boards, I'm struggling with the size of our board and the fee increase comparatively to other boards like the physical therapy board. I mean, we're not, we're not that far off from them now. So, um, I'm not questioning. I don't, my comments are not intended to sound like they're questioning your data. They are not. I, I just don't know how to help us get there. If you have a recommendation to help us get there that provides details to examine this, then, then please, otherwise I would then rest on the fact that yes, we need the details of under expenditures. So we can see where there's cost savings so we can make a good recommendation. It, it, but I, I trust your expertise on this, Heather, and if you have a different set of, of uh, data to help us get there, then by all means, just present that so that we can um, get to the heart of the matter. Thank you. <clears throat> um, so, So, um, so, so, for example, this document shows what our budget is and then, you know, what we spent. So you're, so you, so you, in this, would this format help you? Cause I mean, obviously my, my ask of you would be the same of, you know, what it was to, you know, OTAC and the OTA, you know, what information do you, to, should we provide? So we provide expenditure information. Um, obviously, this is a fiscal year end one. It is not the, the the monthly one. And under my report, I have the one that's only through fiscal month two, which would mean July one to August thirty one, right? So, so would this format into the future showing you what I project the expenditure would be? Would I mean is is that what would I want to give you what you needed? I mean, I and so. I guess I need specifics about that. In addition to what Richard had mentioned about the scenarios with varying fees um, added to a fund condition, and let me just let me just one second pop back to the fund condition. Um, so the so the fund condition we could show this document with the increase in fees shown in this area. Okay, by, you know, by, by line item. Um, and then, you know, if that other, the prior slide showing the expenditure information will work to supplement this rather than just a rounded up dollar amount, we, we can do that. And we could do it with showing, um, you know, varying fees regarding the, um, like different increases, like, right, what, what would $40 look like? You know, what would $60 look like? Going back to, the these fees, um, you know, the the board's not real out of line, and um, the going back to the report that you know I previously provided, provided even though it only showed two years, it did show though that you know of those two years, the you know the lower dollar amounts earned, right? The comparison of the revenue to the expenditures. So we can provide a couple of different scenarios with the increase increase in revenue, right? So revenue number one, everyone pays forty dollars more. You know, uh, scenario number two, OTAs pay you know forty dollars more, and, o and OTs pay fifty five dollars more. What have you? We we can provide a number of scenarios there. We can also show that um, what it would look like here if we weren't paying credit card fees, right? So then you could have a, a different picture. I I just need to know, you know what like more specifically because it's kind of hard to anticipate what what your questions would be or what your needs would be so um sp identifying specific expenditure reductions and or savings as well as the varying fees you know what what else would be helpful this is uh, I think, I think you're on mute, Denise. Uh, you know, there's a thing here. You know, hello. I, I, hold on, Jeff, one second. Um, 
Uh, Denise, were you were muted while you were talking? Are you? Oh, my my apologies. Two last to my last follow up on this topic is to just say to your specific first question, Heather, I do find the the details of that paperwork useful. Um, but I'm just one board member, but I find understanding where expenditures are going, where we don't spend helpful to form the decision further on your um, suggestion to show the fee increase. Could you also make sure that one of those columns is no fee increase so we could see what really happens uh, to the fund if there's no increase comparatively to a $20 increase, $40? Do you see where, where I'm at? Yeah. Um, so this document does show when the board will be broke. The board will be insolvent at the end of 2024 fiscal year because we can't start a fiscal year, you know, negative, right? That's even showing all of these savings. So we will go back and we can do, we can do what you said, identify the specific expenditures and, and there will be a correlating um, months in reserve down here. And you may recall at the last meeting before these numbers here in the red were dropped in, this go negative number was a fiscal year sooner. Right, and so the document, because it's projections is very fluid. This is um, when the board will be go, would be broke at the end of fiscal year 2024, right? So that's, though that is including this, what, for 556, $700,000 savings over the next three years, saving that much money would delay us being broke until then. If these numbers were not included, and, um, you know, I believe that's why it was asked, uh, because uh, again, as a reminder, or for, you know, informational purposes to those on, on the line, the actual column here shows our actual expenditures, except that in the current year. Or the budget year, these are, uh, this is governor's budget. And then this is with a, a modest increase <laughs> built in. So, to the point that uh, the question was posed, I believe it was Richard, how come we went from 26 or 2.6 million up to 3.3? Well, we didn't increase our expenditures that much, but this document only shows expenditures for prior fiscal years. It does not identify the budget. So, current year and going forward is actual budget. And that's one of the reasons that was asked, could you show us what some savings would be? So, by simply popping in this $700,000 in savings over the next three years, that's what staved off the insolvency for another fiscal year. It actually pushed it out. Because if you look at prior year documents, we were broke here instead of ending 2024 with a little bit of money. Uh, so, I mean, I, I, I hope that explanation helps, but we will identify specific expenditure reductions. Um, we have the information already prepared, so that'll be fine about no fee increase. And then, of course, we'll provide another scenario with a couple of different um, fee increases. One more thing, going back to um, going back to this, what other boards charge, this only shows application fees and renewal fees, and perhaps it's it's increasing other fees and or establishing fees, right? So. You know, for example, um, a duplicate license, some boards charge $75. I can't remember. We pay, we charge 25 or 35. I can't remember, but so it's not just about increasing the renewal fee really to, um, make it, you know, fair and kind of spread across the board. It could include establishing additional fees as, as well. Thank you. Thank you. I know Jeff. Jeff. Go ahead. Jeff. Yeah, I just, you know, this discussion is a little concerning. One, I think what our biggest problem is uh, how do we project value to licensees, I guess. Uh, um, in this day and age, it's so hard to get people, people to use really critical thinking to look at the benefits things they're providing. Um, politics to get in the way of government. You know what I mean? Um, so that is a challenge. We've got, you know, we have and we should expect ongoing inflationary pressures that are beyond our control. But we have to prepare for. Uh, and then we've got the difference between discretionary 
and non-discretionary uh, expenditures. And it looks like um, the work that we've been doing on discretionary to pack discretion, uh, non-discretionary decisions, it's to remove services, right? We reduce staff, we reduce the size of and access to our building, we reserve, we, we re reduce the hours of operation. Um, those are not a place that I think this board should even be contemplating. Um, you know, we've got to do a better job and the people on this board that are practitioners need to do a better job of talking to their peers as peers, not as board members, and explaining the value that they get from us. Because most people don't deal with us until they have a problem or they need to renew their license. But all the work we're doing throughout the year, throughout the many years, is really making it so they don't have to talk to us. They can get their license. Um, so that, that is my dilemma here. I mean, I, can we do better? Sure. I'm sure we can have more efficient staff. We could not be impacted by, you know, events of a pandemic. Uh, we could, um, you know, operate continually more remotely, which at the end of the day, I still think that is not in the best interest of the consumer or the, the we should spend time defining what the value is, the ability for us to collect on violations, the ability to do it in a rapid way, the ability to have, you know, decisions from our arbitrators that are fair and effective, that the, you know, the attorney general's office works efficiently and, and does as much, but the, a lot of that stuff we don't control. We just need to do a better you know, job of articulating the work that we're doing. That's my my two cents. Thank you, board member Farrow. Richard, I saw you pop up. Did you want to add to the conversation? Uh, yes, thank you. I, I I went down because Jeff was breaking up a little. And I didn't want my bandwidth to uh, to interfere to be clogging it. So um, I am looking at uh, I think. We have some very interesting bar graphs and graphs related to the uh, upcoming sunset report, having to do with the volumes and the time frames. Um, what I'm wondering here is, I mean, if we look at the, what's currently on the screen, um, there's there the the first line program expenditures goes up, and the total expenditure and that that sort of is the leader for the total expenditures. It would it might be helpful to do a, a graph of the top five uh, line items from year to year that are rise that where the costs are going up, right? Because what is driving some more detail on what is driving the increase in the budget? Um, what what not all the, I mean it's good we need all the categories in our analysis, but for communications purposes with for example, you know, licensees or OTAC and OTA, having the top five or the top seven or the top 10 or whatever it is uh, of the items and that sh in, in, a, in a line, in a graph or something that shows the increase and, and where that increase, you know, what, what's driving the increase in our uh, budget uh, might be a helpful graphic easy to you know make it easier to communicate because i'm not actually i'm looking at these materials and i'm not really seeing that here i think if i'm not sure if that was uh, provided in the previous one but like which cat is it is it in for is it the attorney general fees for example the uh, investigative fees things like that that might if that's a you know increasing uh you know 25 percent or 30 50 percent whatever it is uh over this period that we're looking at that might be a helpful to communicate um, rather than just having the total expenditures. Uh, and maybe that's too complicated. I, I, I defer to, I'd like to hear more about that. And I'm wondering if that might satisfy some of Denise's concerns uh, for more detail as well. I know Heather will probably jump on. Um, I know 
enforcement. I know we had the those amounts all increasing because we have more disciplinary matters. And so those went up considerably. Um, and I know we have those whole numbers because we had them in the last board meeting, but it sounds like um, a little more details. It looks like in a progression or bar graph. Heather, does that does that make sense to you between what um, Denise and Richard just shared? Do you still need more direction? Um, yes, it does. Of... Um... I guess I'm struggling um, just a little bit because um, I I understand the request, and of course, and of course, we'll do that. I mean, the least amount of money that we've ever turned back in, so to speak, or underspent was ninety one thousand, and every year we underspend a great deal of money from the budget, right? But every year that revenue is still not enough. And so I'm, I'm totally happy to provide the information. You know, we'll go back, we'll provide it in um, my bar graph format. But I, what I was really um, looking for was, was, you know, for the um, example that I had provided, you know, previously, because the, the, the problem is that the revenue is even with our underspending. And I think that's the, one of the key parts, but even with us underspending, our revenue is still short. If we spent our whole budget, we would have been broke a long time ago, right? So I, I'm, I'm looking at my um, the report from September 12th, and the example given was that the board two years ago co collected 2.2, but spent 2.5, okay? So that 300 comes out of the fund. And then last fiscal year, we spent 2.4, I'm sorry, we collected 2.4 and spent 2.7. So again, another three plus, you know, came out of the fund. The fund condition is dwindling because if you look at the revenues here, despite under expenditure, they're still less than these line items, right? And so we, we can provide the top five and we provided, you know, uh, the AG information, you know, one year we'll spend 130, then it'll be 180. Then the next year will be 110. And so when I was asked to provide um, possible future projected expenditure reduction in enforcement, for example, I can't anticipate when people are going to violate, right? And like right now, we don't have very many probationers, for example. We have even we have very few that are testing. This is right now, I think we have only eight probationers that are testing, for example, right? So that's like the least that I've seen in you know eight or nine years. And so projecting future enforcement expenditures is, is a bit of a challenge because you go through periods and people just have small violations, then you have a couple of big cases, right? And so there's part of the costs. I see Richard, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. I, when I'm, I'm looking at our meeting materials from last the last meeting, and there's a ex enforcement expenditure history, 2021-22 uh, augmentation for OAH evidence and court reporters. And I'm looking, that's a very, to me, as a convincing document because it shows that the licensee population in 2015, 2016 was 15,553 at 2021, 22, it was 18,000. So there's an, obviously an increase in the licensee population. There's a complaints received went from 419 in 2015, 16 to 1,008 in 2021. So there's dub, more than double the number of complaints. Um, you know, that those kind of uh, trends and then also the, and then the attorney general fees, the administrative hearing fees, the, the, uh, the court reporter fees, which went from 1000 to 4,800. Um, you know, so, so these kinds of expense, you know, those expense trends. Um, are, are the things that drive all these, all of them put together, drive the increase in expenditures. So I'm sold that our expenses, you know, are increasing and that we're going to need to increase fees to do it and that savings aren't enough. So I'm not, I'm not in that place where I'm, I'm not convinced. I do think we're, we're going to need a fee increase. I do think we need to communicate the reasons for that based on historical trends and data and in a clear way to the, to the licensee population. So to, to, uh, so that we, you know, we have. Uh, an answer to that. Um, so, but, so, so I, I mean, I would be willing. I'm willing to support moving forward with scenarios for a fee increase. Obviously, we can't enact a fee increase. 
without more deliberation and without more, it's going to be carried over to a future meeting. So, so I believe this is the document you're referring to. And so I've tried to um, oh, highlight yes. the information here showing those, you know, expenditures. Yes, yes. It is and okay. so, um, and so, you know, it does show that our budget did was increased, you know, 2 years ago. Um, but before that, when it was relatively flat, you can see, I mean, look, our low is 128, you know, the year after that was 179, right? I mean, um, so that, that is just expenditure information. So if that's what you're talking about, but the thing is right here, even for the, um, OAH, you know, you have a year where we do mostly stips and there's low OAH costs. You, you have a year where people exercise or due process and there's more, more hearings, right? And so the, and when that's one of the reasons here that these other, you know, line items, although we do believe that the, these two fiscal years that there were, there were problems here, we believe that they were, um, might've been incorrectly, you know, coded, but so here, so we have the expenditure, you know, um, history. I don't know that these are the top five when you say um, the top five line items that are increasing from year to year and show that so, in the grass form. I don't know that that so would be this they? one. I mean, what are they, Heather? Why, you know, we need to be able to articulate that and communicate that what, what we're doing with the money, right? I mean, we can't, if it's going up and down, then why don't we have a flat budget? Is that, is that not a reasonable question? Um, there's got to be something that's increasing. I mean, personnel costs, as I'm sure is some of it, retirement and all those things. We have to be able to articulate what it is that's causing the increase in costs. It's going to lead to the situation. All of the things considered. Does that not, does that not make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, saying it goes up and down is not an art is not a persuasive. Reason well, well uh, um, we need to, we need to have information about what's driving it and it's, well, I'm just trying to find. I, I understand that and I, but I, I just want the, um, to remind that as a self supporting and self funded agency. In theory, we would be revenue neutral, right? Meaning that the amount we take in is the amount we spend. And for more than 10 years, right. this board has been collecting less revenue that, than it, it, it spent. And so that's the reason that the fund has this downward trend. And so that, you know, so, and, and we've demonstrated that we have underspent, you know, our budget. And so what we will do is we will do this. We'll, we'll identify those top five line items. I mean, the problem is um, some of these might show a year to year increase in, in, a, in a graph format. If it comes out that it's court reporters and it went from 1000 to 4000, and that's the one with the biggest increase year to year, the dollars wise, that's a small drop in the bucket. Right? And so, right. Um, it is. so, um, yeah, so we, we will, we will, so let me just circle back here. So top 5 line items that in a graph format that have shown to be rising year to year, um, the various scenarios. Or sorry, scenarios with various um, different fee rates and the impact to the revenue, as well as identifying specific expenditure uh, reductions. You know, of course, one will you know be the credit card fees, and then but we'll also identify you know some others that um, we you know we think that we could you know underspend. Um, let me see. This is not the document I'm looking for, so it might be not in this report. So. I, mean, um, I think I think I hear you saying, Heather, that because you know, that we've that we've never quite brought in enough money to support what we're actually doing now, so we would need an increase just to stay flat. Correct, without any future yeah. increase. So, and, and here maybe here's the visual. So, just so nineteen twenty, we we collected two point two, and spent two point five, even though our budget was more than that, right? And then last year we collected 2.4 and but spent like 2.8. Right? So how so, do you so how do you articulate? Because so that this that tells a different that's a different story from what we're seeing in this document where there's a budget increase from two point two uh two 
314 to 3625. Okay. So, so that, that shows that there's an increase in the budget. So um I'm telling a completely different story and it's confusing. I mean, I have to say it's just confusing to have from as from the point of view of a licensee. I think we need to be able to To, to articulate it a, a little bit more clearly, or hmm. if the message is we're we've, we're underspending and we're and and we're you know our debit there the deficit is has built on that, then that's a different story from incre the increase in the budget. That's just and so I, yeah. What I'm hearing is is you know we have an anticipated income that we don't realize we have a budget that is greater than based upon this assumption and that we're, we're always underspending the budget because even underspending the budget doesn't meet with the amount of money that's collected in fees and we're supposed to be revenue neutral Group. We don't enjoy why or not from the numbers you just reported it, Heather. You, we don't enjoy enjoy a rainy day fund where we can, can take any money that we don't use and roll it over. Um, hey Jeff, okay. I just want to just is there any way it's it's so um, choppy and broken? I and I know they're trying to take money. Can we just switch to, or do, you're saying some really valid points, and I think it's going to be hard to pick up on the minutes. Is it, can you call, or I hate to lose yeah. you on the phone, but it's yeah. super choppy. Or uh, or maybe just go off camera so it takes less bandwidth, okay. and then it might be that a little might bit be stronger. That might be a better way to do it. Let's try that. Okay. Okay, can you guys hear me better now? Yes. Okay. So I don't actually Jeff it started again. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, there's this, you know, we don't have the luxury of a rainy day. Let me try to call you in. Hold on. Okay. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, Jeff, please go ahead. You can hear me better now. Okay. So far, so good. So I said we have the we have the issue of um, how much we collect in fees um, and how much we spend. Is it giving me a press one thing? Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Right. yes, Jeff, we can hear you. Um, but now if you're talking, we can't hear you because now it's radio silent. I can't tell if you're talking or not. Uh, this is the moderator, Jeff, um, because you're on the phone. Oh, looks like you found it. Yes, You'll need to control the mute and unmute on your computer session. Right, right. Okay, now you can hear me. Can everybody yeah. hear me now? Yes. Yeah. We, we, we collect a certain amount, we spend a certain amount, and we have the budget for a certain amount. And the amount we collect isn't directly tied to our budget, right? We don't have the ability, even if we were to collect more than we'd spend, to really have a rainy day fund because that money really is state money that gets redistributed through a budget. Um, we do a really good job of trying to avoid the cost of attorney generals and um, hearing officers and the cost to do briefs and to take people through the whole board process by negotiating stipulated settlements, of which we might even deal with one in private, you know, closed session here soon. 
And I would imagine in negotiations, part of the deal to get that to avoid those other fees, that there may be, we may not realize the full recovery of costs to pursue even that portion of it. It would be interesting to see what that cost to provide that is versus the cost for go to full hearing. Even though it may cost more to go to hearings, if we recover a bigger percentage, maybe our budget to cost um, closes. You know, we're assuming that we save money by negotiating uh, steps. Um, can we look at that? Can we look at whether we are foregoing recovery to avoid, you know, bringing these other pieces of the process in to our detriment at the end of the day because we would have recovered more had we gone to a full hearing? That's my comment. Thank you, Jeff. Any other board comment? Um, oh, yeah. One more thing. This is Beata. Uh, well, I really can I was was I first or is Richard? Yes, Beata, go ahead. <clears throat> Excuse me. First of all, I really would like to thank Heather for all the explanation and all the charts and everything we have in front of us. Um, I do want to just there's something that I looked up from several years ago, and it's my belief that when we voted for initial fee increase, and it caused us a lot of discussion, and we went over it, you know, throughout very many meetings and everything like that. So, um, I remember then that, <clears throat> you know, some were the, uh, not so happy with us, but the way we said it then several years ago, that it's supposed to be lined up now, right? So, to me, none of this is really the news because it was anticipated that this would be happening uh, around this time, right? So this is like lined up and then we cannot have flat budget because we constantly have different things going on. So in my opinion, it's like I, re I do support the fee increase and I think it's fair and it's justified and I think it's going to have the board act more efficiently and we don't have to worry about it, you know, should we have um, a worse year next year, just because Heather is really smart and playing it safe how all of the expenditures happen, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't be protected and protect ourselves because this is happening. This is not just us. This is happening throughout all the boards. This is happening in the, you know, this is just part of life. We, you know, every so often, fees go up and things go up. So um, just the, my two cents in it, I do support it and I would like the board to be safe um, by supporting the fee increase. And I know we're not gonna please everybody with that, but the board has to be protected and, and in order to operate properly. And we cannot risk it because then pedaling back would be a lot worse than going forward with this increase right now. Thank you. Thank you, Beata. Richard? Hi, yeah, I, and, and I agree with uh, Beata, and I know, and uh, I think of two, I thought two things occurred to me during the uh, last couple board comments. One is um, if expenses go up and down, you can all sometimes show a trend line. Uh, of of upward motion that doesn't exactly match, you know, they, they have these these graphs where they do a they average out, you know, over the period and they kind of show a trend line, so that it doesn't, you know, have a squiggly line and it show, but it shows the trend. The other thing, and I, I don't know if that's a possibility here. The other thing is, if we are, you know, the the difference between what we're spending and what we're bringing in, you know, that kind of that kind of a comparison. Like how we're, you know, having some kind of a visual on that would be, you know, the, the, the narrowing of our, I mean, so some kind of graphic would be a helpful uh, to, for, for public, for, you know, for the licensees. Does, I, I don't know if that makes sense, but I'm since if we're underspending and it's, uh, and the revenues, it's really just an expense and revenue. Um, some, some kind of simple visual. 
a communication device would be, I think, uh, helpful. Um, Richard, this is Heather. Just so, just to clarify, so in this 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 document was intended to show what the board's um, expenditure authority was, um, and then what what was spent. Right? To show, <clears throat> excuse me, how much we underspent. So what I think I'm hearing you say is, knowing what we actually spent is important, but seeing it relative to the revenue collected. Yes. Right. Okay. I, I mean, I hear that. I hear you saying. I hear that message coming from you. And and it would be, you know, if, if that is a clear way to communicate that with a graph, that would be, if that's if I'm understanding that right. So, for example, rather than in a table displaying like a vertical graph with revenue collected and expenditures, that um, we can do that. The one thing I want to point out though is that if if the budget is two point three million and you spend one point seven. You're, you, you are losing out the fact that we underspent by half a million dollars, right? I mean, <clears throat> so, so we can change this and simply only provide expenditures and revenue, which is the true um, item, which is what affects the bottom line in our, in our months in reserve. But certainly if, if, if that having by fiscal year, the expenditures and the revenue collected, I mean, that's, that's a simple and easy thing too. Well, what if you did budget and expenditures to show that we're underspending and the rep, I mean, budget and expenditures and then revenue. Okay. And how, and how they, those are converging. Okay. And how we're crossing the budget line or something, you know, something like that, that, that would be a really, uh, to me, a helpful graphic. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other board discussion? Or any motion put forth? Um, are we waiting for a motion or are we waiting <clears throat> for um, Heather to provide the requested uh, tables for the next time? Yeah, I think that's what I'm reaching out for too. We'll be able to see if there's a motion. Just do people need to see the table before, like, there's a vote or what? What's I the... have no problem, you know, doing the motion, but it seems if uh, the will of the board is to wait a little bit, I'm okay with that too. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is Heather. If I may, while while you all sort that out, one thing I would ask that you do um, that you discuss. Is that if you know, if you could please go back to the credit card, um, passing on of those fees, unless you, unless you cannot make a decision on that without the other information. But if that is something that you all can discuss and agree on, if there was a motion, you know, relative to that, you know, that that would be helpful. Um, but again, you know, I just wanted to throw that out there. It's certainly, you know, um, it's obviously at your pleasure. Thank you. Well, yeah, I, I'm sorry, Heather. I uh, I shared my thoughts earlier. I thought that that's not something that I just think flat out uh, the board should be. Um, that should not be a cost of ours. Uh, it just it makes no sense. That's a big chunk of the pie, forty four thousand dollars. So I I don't think that's. Um, I think that cost needs to be passed on. But I, again, I'm only one person on the board. Does anybody have thoughts about that? The credit card fees um, that to help the board move forward with that. Well, I would like to speak in favor of. Um, considering two motions, just, 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 there could be one motion, uh, to, uh, proceed with, uh, what's necessary to ask, you know, empower the executive officer to move forward with, um, uh, pass, uh, passing on the credit card fees to the, uh, to the licensees. Uh, and the other one would be a second motion. It seems to me would be to ask. Uh, the executive officer to present at the next board meeting or a future board meeting um, potential fee increase uh, amounts for of different a couple some different amounts so that we can have a discussion about the whole thing. Uh, I don't need to wait to see a graph to, and push it off to a future meeting. I don't think we have time for that, given the the uh, length of time it gets to have things go through. Plus, we're going to need to report on it. Uh, this is would be an important thing for the next year's president to report to uh, the uh, legislature during the 
um, sunset because that you know fee increases is, is a typical thing that they would want to know about and our fund the fund condition how we're managing the funds and so I think getting forward movement on that uh, early earlier in the year uh, is super important uh, given our board meeting schedule. So I mean I'll I move uh, I I'm happy to make I, I move that we ask the executive officer to move forward with passing on credit card fees to the users of Breeze or to the to the users to the people paying. I second. You're muted, Sharon. Sorry, Denise. Um, there's a motion and there was a second. Thank you. Richard made the motion. Denise second that motion. Um, any board discussion before we go to public comment? If not, uh, moderator, could we open it up for public comment? This is the moderator at the direction of the board. I've opened up the Q&A feature for public comment. Members of the public, if you would like to make a comment on this item, please click that Q&A icon located at the bottom right hand corner of your WebEx screen. I'll go ahead and pause a moment to allow the public time to access that Q&A panel and submit their requests. All right, it looks like we do have one individual's requested public comment. Uh, one moment while I pull you up in the attendee list. Uh, Edward, uh, Brian Edwards, uh, you'll be given three minutes to speak in a 30 second warning. I will request to unmute your microphone now. All right, and you are unmuted. Um, Oh, it's being recorded. Um, thanks for the, the discussion. And I want to thank um, board member Bookwalter for his questions uh, earlier. Um, I, I guess part of my confusion, and, and I'm hoping that this is um, part of what can be clarified, um, was sort of the, the point of um, if, we're, if we're underspending on the budget, but we're still losing money, are we budgeting every year for a loss? Um, so that was one question. And then I think the other, the other point I know, um, board member Bookwalter, um, suggested that it'd be helpful to look at sort of trends over time, um, for expenses. Um, and I think that would be super helpful. I'm also sort of curious, and I don't know if we have access to the information, but what are the trends of some of our colleague, um, boards? Um, I, I know that in the, um, in today's documents, there's a comparison of, of the licensure fees, but I'm I'm also curious as to where they're spending their money and if if they've and how that compares to where we are. Um, it definitely was striking to see that the the um, speech language pathology and audiologists um, their licensure renewals are less than half of what um, occupational therapists and uh, uh, and PTs are. So. Um, to me, that would be meaningful information to sort of see how we benchmark against, you know, sort of the, the triad of our, um, our rehab professionals. So um, that's all. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Brent. Anybody um, want to, or any other public comment? Uh, this is the moderator. Appears there are no further requests. Would you like me to close that Q&A? Yes, please. Thank you, moderator. Okay, any um, discussion or um, the points that Bryant brought forth? If not, um, we have a motion and a second on the floor. Denise, did you want to make a comment? Nope, just writing for the vote. Okay, so we have a motion. Yeah, we have a motion and a second. Uh, Secretary Marcos, do you, do you, is it okay to take um, a vote, please, on the motion that's on the floor? Richard Bookwalter. Aye. Lena, no. Hi. Denise Miller. Yes. Jeff Farrell. Hi. Sharon Pavlovich. Yes. Beata Morphos. Yes. Hi. So that was one motion, Richard. I just wanted to ask it would did you still intend on making two motions or were you okay with the one? Uh, I can make the second motion. I, I move that we ask the executive officer to present scenarios for different fee increase amounts uh, at a future board meeting. There's a motion, another motion on the floor. Any second? 
I'll second. Jeff is a second. Um, any board discussion before we go to public comment? Um, would that give us, since Heather said that this needs to be done by February, so when would we see it from, uh, because we're not, we don't have another meeting besides the sunset committee meeting, right? So are we going to be too late on implementing this? Um, Heather, Heather? Uh, Heather? Uh, yeah, so just to clarify, after the sunset committee has its meeting in another week or so, there will be one final board meeting. Um, we sent out a doodle about that, and so I'm sorry, it's the first week in December. Um, we have not yet coordinated that actual meeting date. We'll do so. So there will be <clears throat> one additional meeting uh, for the board to adopt the sunset report, and if the board did not want to limit that to only the sunset report, to, but to talk about this, then certainly we could... Um, send out a new doodle with, you know, increased time frames uh, for you all to consider and possibly, you know, look at this in, in December instead of next February. It's just a thought. Thank you. And would that give you enough time to collect the information that was requested by uh, other board members? Well, um, <laughs> Rich, Richard's uh, request for the different scenarios a little bit more limiting than the, the requests that were earlier regarding identifying specific um, expenditure reduction, um, you know, items as well as, you know, the, the top five year, top five year over year increases in a graph format. Um, if it's limited to this week, we can definitely provide uh, this information. It, and, and and possibly some of the other, or just um, you know, compressed with all these back to back meetings and providing all these different you know materials because you know each meeting you know you need more information so you can make an informed decision. So for sure we can do the scenarios and um, possibly the, and the graph comparison, even though it wasn't part of the motion, but the graph comparison showing the budget, the expenditures, you know, and the revenue, um, we could provide that by then. Board would like that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Does that help, Yara? Well, yes and no, because I stand a little bit. I feel that uh, for me, I have enough in front of me uh, based on uh, previous years' documents that we have and what we discussed and what we voted on. So uh, I just don't want us to be delayed. And we've been talking about it uh, for several meetings, you know. Um, not last meeting, the one before. So that's, yeah. But I'm a, no, I think um, I'm on the same page where you are. I have enough information for me, but we yes, do have a yes. motion and there was a second. Um, so are there any other, so that, yeah, Jeff, you have your um, video on. Did you have a question to contribute before we go to a vote? Nope, no, nope, yeah. I, I said the other, and I was ready to vote on this one too, so. Okay, uh, Secretary Murphy. Oh, I'm so sorry, Richard. And I'll just say, uh, Richard, if December isn't going to work for this, we can always call another board meeting in January if we have to. But uh, you know, it'd be I didn't want to include December uh, as the date, the drop dead date. Forget it, putting this in the agenda. I just said a future agenda uh, in my motion so that I gives you leeway if if uh, it's not possible to get it done by that first week in December. Um, but uh, by all means, if we can do it by December, I would love to see it then. Well, my worry is if it doesn't happen in December, then starting the new year and being delayed on this is going to definitely delay us. That's the yeah, only I agree. Problem. I agree. Okay, there was a motion. There was a second. Um, Secretary Marcos, do you mind calling the vote? Oh, you need to open that to public, please. Oh, gosh, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> um, moderator, could you open up to public comment, please? This is the moderator, and at the direction of the board, I have opened up the Q&A feature for public comment. Members of the public, if you would like to make a comment on this item, please click that Q&A icon located at the bottom right-hand corner of your WebEx screen. I'll go ahead and pause a moment to allow the public time to access that Q&A panel and submit their requests.
All right, it appears there are no requests for public comment. Would you like me to close that Q and A panel? Yes, thank you, moderator. Secretary Marcos, when you're ready, can you call the vote? Richard Bookwalter. Aye. Lena Doe. Aye. Denise Miller. Yes. Jeff Farrell. Aye. Sharon Pavlovich. Sorry, guys, no, I think I have what I need. Uh, and Beata yep. Marcos is also a no. Okay, motion carries the, with the quorum. Um, okay, that addresses agenda item number 14. We have half an hour before lunch break, um, and the next agenda item is discussion on the fieldwork communications work group, recommended letters to be sent out regarding supervising students completing level fieldwork two. Um, Lynn, I know um, we had postponed it from our last meeting to this one. Any updates on the conversation about the letters or kind of anything that you want to share? Um, and Oh, so I'm so sorry, Lena, before I open, before I open the floor, I'm having a request to take a little bio break. Um, so I'm so sorry, you are going to be right after, I'm assuming maybe 10 minutes. Is that okay, everybody? Since we're going to do a lunch at about 1230. Yes. Yes. Okay, let's take a little bio break. Moderator, if you can put us at 10 minutes about. Um, what would that be? Uh, five after, then we'll come back. Sorry, guys. Thank you. <laughs> 